had it rough recently. Miss Nelda, her birthday is Thursday. Send her a text and tell her how much you love her and happy birthday. We love you, Nelda. And I have a card to read for you today. With all our thanks, we want you to know that we're grateful for your kind and considerate ways, and we thank you for being so special. It means more than we could ever say. Thank you so much for all the calls, prayers, and just being there for our family during our time of need. You're all God's blessings to us, Levi, Yao, and family. They're all very special to us. Well, today's a special day, isn't it? Palm Sunday. Yep. You, know, you think about Palm Sunday, and the first thing that pops in my mind is the picture of Jesus on that donkey, right? And those palm branches laid out in the path, cloaks thrown in front of him. People shouting, Hosanna, right? Blessed the name of the Lord. Hosanna. It's the first day of Holy Week. Pray and meditate. Hosanna. I hope you recognize who the true king is and that your soul shouts for him this week. You know, he walked, he rode that donkey into Jerusalem knowing what was going to happen. He didn't have to. But he carried all the love and the grace and mercy that he needed with him. You know, he loved us so much. that he could look those people in the eye as they shouted Hosanna, knowing in five days they would be shouting crucify him, that he still loved them. He washed Judas' feet, didn't he? Knowing he was betraying him. He sat at the table and broke bread with Judas. Oh, that we could have that level of love. I pray that you spend some time this week studying and reading on Jesus last week on this earth. We are a blessed people. And I know sometimes in life it's hard to see the blessings. But I assure you, Jesus had a hard time seeing the blessings that day, too. But love can get you through anything. Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, with thankful hearts for another day. Lord, another opportunity to gather and to praise you, to thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you bestow upon each and every one of us. Lord, we've been hit with the so much sickness, so much pain. I pray, God, that you wrap your arms around each and every one here who has a need in their heart, in their mind, in their life, whatever the need is. Lord, I pray that you wrap your arms around them right now. Give them a tight squeeze and let them know that you're there and you will be there on their journey. 
I thank you, God, for each and every family represented here and pray for your blessings upon them, Lord. God, we just thank you so much for the cross, for what Jesus did, for the amazing love, your grace and your mercy. God, we ask your hand upon the singers as they stand before us to lead us in praise of you today. Jeremy, as he presents the word that you gave him to share with us. And Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to move freely among us today. Lord, minister to those who have a need, who have, whether it's physical, financial, spiritual, emotional. God, I pray you minister to them. We love you, Lord. And we will give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in all things, no matter what. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's praise God today. You're my joy, you're my peace, you're my comfort in time of need, you're my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on, you're the road to hope when this light grows dim, when the waves of doubt comes crashing in, you're the anchor in this troubled storm, almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace You're my comfort in time of need You're my refuge, you're my rock You're the one I depend on You're the road to hope when this light grows dim When the waves of doubt comes crashing in You're the anchor in my troubled storm Almighty God you bore the cross and you bear the scars you're my bright and shining star you gave me sight that i might see the kind of man that i should be you came to die and set me free almighty god You're my bright and shining star. You gave me life that I might see the kind of man that I should be. You came to die and set me free, Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. My refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when this light grows dim. When the waves of doubt comes crashing in. You're the anchor in my troubled storm. Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace, you're my comfort in time of need, you're my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when the light grows in, when the waves of doubt come crashing in, you're my anchor in the troubled storm, oh my God. You're my joy, you're my peace, you're my comfort in time of need, you're my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when the light grows dim, when the waves of doubt come 
to me. You're the anchor in my troubled storm, Almighty God. You're the anchor in this troubled storm, Almighty God. the long dark night out on the open sea by faith alone and sign unknown And yet his eyes were watching me. The anchor holds, though the ship is battered. The anchor holds, though the sail are toward I have fallen on my knees as I face this raging sea but the anchor holds in spite of a storm visions and I've had dreams I've even held them in my head but I never They would slip right through Like they were only grains of sand The anchor hold Though the ship is battered The sails are so I have fallen on my knees as I face this raging sea, but the anchor holds in spite of the storm.
Though the ship is better, the anchor holds. Though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I face this rain. But the anchor holds in spite of the storm. I have fallen on my knees, Lord, as I face my raging sea. But the anchor holds. In spite of the storm, Brother Marty. Marty has a word he wants to share with the church this morning. It thrilled my heart. Brother Marty and Sister Tammy, they they sit back there on the back corner. You don't never hear a whole lot out of them, and uh, they've never caused me any grief. And I love them, and it thrills my heart whenever he comes to me and says, "I have a word today that if I don't let it out, I'm going to bust." Y'all listen to what Brother Marty has to say.
Today I face the mountain Once again it seems so tall I tried to climb It seemed I'd surely fall And so I knelt and called on Jesus and as always I felt his presence His hands of mercy Lifted me just in time So I want to thank him And I want to praise him For his grace has been sufficient And like before He's given victory one more time. He was always standing right by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide. I want to thank him. I want to praise him one more time. Now looking back on life's journey Since the day I first met him So many times His love and mercy had to rescue me So once again I stand before him One more time I stand and praise Him for all His blessings. My God has been so good to me. Oh, and I want to thank Him. I want to praise Him for His grace has been sufficient. And like before, He's given victory.
And he'll stand there by you. Oh, just be still. And you'll see. And we've all had fear And we've all had moments When we've held back our tears Oh, but there's something special For in our darkest hour Oh, it's there in our weakness that we find God's power. If you'll just stand when you've done all you know. He'll stand there by you. Just be still, and you'll see the hand of God move. Oh, just stand, and He'll stand. Doctors had tried their best. You see, her hope was almost gone. But then she heard about a healer, and she reached out to God's own son. Oh, and it did not take a second touch Cause she was healed with one Oh, and just one touch of his head
And I tried so many things And I searched for worldly treasures It was the only way it seemed Oh, did I had overlooked the Savior Cause I was too blind to see That after all of my adventures I found the one thing that I Still wrapped up in his grave clothes. But then I, I journeyed to the garden where old Joseph led him lay. Things unseen, but 
just one step in his direction and then in love he ran to me if you Deep inside, you know he's living, and death has died. You ask me how I know he lives, well he lives in my heart. Yeah. Deep inside, you know he's living, and death has died. Death has died. When the time comes and I'm standing at the river that separates the two worlds that I love, torn between my precious friends and family and the place of peace that's waiting up above. Hold my hand and stay there by my side. And when I finally step into the tide, celebrate me hope, celebrate me there, celebrate me in that land of wonder where nothing can compare. Celebrate me in that place. Celebrate me, say by grace. Don't you say we because I'm gone. Celebrate me more. I've spent most of my life on earth preparing. To take this trip from here to heaven's shore With the shield and the word of God to guide me It's a comfort knowing I am not alone So when I take my final fleeting breath And fade into gentle sleep of death celebrate me hope celebrate me there celebrate me in that land of wonder where nothing can compare celebrate me in that place celebrate me saved by grace don't you say No more broken dreams, no more tears I'll cry, into my Father's arms I'll fly. Celebrate me in that land of wonder, where 
of their faith there is no pain in dying there's no victory in the grave it was all taken away when Jesus went down and charged through the gates of hell amen <laughs> he rolled in and took away the keys of death hell and the grave amen and because of that in exchange, he gave us victory. Somebody better say amen. There's a little song. Brother Willie, let me borrow that tambourine. Don't matter, won't make the most racket. A little song goes like this. Mm, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Oh, his word is mine. His word is mine. His word today is mine. And I told Satan to get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Y'all singing. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. And I told Satan to get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Preacher, you shoot off the hip sometimes, yeah? Sometimes it's better to shoot off the hip than out the mouth. Hello, somebody. My goodness. Where are we at today? Palm Sunday is where we are. And this is the, the week before what we celebrate as Resurrection Day. Amen. Uh, I, I've been reading and studying and listening to different things this week, and, and uh, I found a, a video yesterday that said that it was prob very probable that Jesus could have been born around the 1st of April on our calendar. How many know our calendar don't match with that calendar? Hello? We have 12 months in a year. They celebrated 13. We, we have 30 and 31 days a month and sometimes 28 or 29. But back in the days, according to the, the lunar calendar, 28 days in a month is what it's supposed to be. Preacher, you confuse me. I don't mean to. But I'm, what I'm telling you is that people specifically the human race have changed so much in so many years that nothing is as God left it we have manipulated and molested things to the point where it's nothing like he left hello the government hello whether it be Caesar or the current White House administration have made things so messed up. We in a mess. America is in a mess. 
Have you ever gave your child something and let them play with it? Something like Play-Doh? An ink pen. A paint and a brush. And before you know it, sit that joker down, Maddie, beside a mud hole and see what happens. I promise, whatever you put that child in charge of, they will make a mess of. Their motto is, it ain't good till it gets all over you. Put Buckner in front of a plate of spaghetti. See what happens. Soon Clara will have a one-year birthday party. Put that one-year birthday cake in front of that child and see what happens. Whatever you put them in control of, they will make a mess of. So what happens? Maddie, you got a wipe. The parent that gave them the authority or the opportunity to make that mess They have to step in and clean it up. At, around my house when I was a kid, my mama would always say, wait till your daddy gets home. Because a lot of times we were to the point where mama didn't even want to mess with it no more. Now when daddy got home, she'd come in there and say, I told you what your daddy got home. He's here now, buddy. You going, uh-huh. Hello? And daddy would come in, snatch that belt out of them uniform britches. Mama would clean it up, but daddy would make it right. We are on the verge of seeing daddy making it right. Now my two little brothers would sit there and go, And daddy be wearing my butt out. They would say, hey, it was all Jeremy's idea. I've been known to make some bad ones. Hello, somebody. And I've had to pay the price for them. But there's going to come a time when people that have made decisions not to serve God will end up paying the penalty. And the church, which are believers in Jesus Christ, is going to sit back like my two kid brothers and go, because we're found without spot. We're found without blemish. It's not because we're perfect by no means, but it's because we have been weighed in the balances and we have been found to be justified, cleansed, renewed, oh. and <laughs> redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Well, that's good stuff. I don't care who you are. Pastor, is that your message for today? No. That was just extra. I want us to turn in the Bible today to the book of John and chapter number 12. Y'all don't stand up. Keep your seat because I'm, I'm not going to read, per se, the verses. Heather's going to put them on the screen as we go through and as we make some uh, comments upon them, but I, I want, I'm going to give you the book report. Amen? In verse 1, we find where Jesus had went back to Bethany. This is a place that he had been, and he raised Lazarus from the dead. Probably one of the greatest works that he had ever done. In verse 2, they made a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus sat at the table. In verse 3, Mary came with a pound of very expensive ointment. And the Bible says that she fell at the feet of Jesus 
with that ointment. And as she did, the Bible says that she wept. It says that she wiped his feet with the hair on his head, her head. So she wept. She washed. As those tears fell on his feet, she washed his feet with her tears. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says that she took the hair from her head and she began to wipe his feet. She didn't have a towel handy. Hello, somebody. So she used what God had gave her. And as she wiped and wept and she washed, the most important thing that she'd done was she worshipped. Amen. She knew who he was. She knew what he was capable of doing. Amen. Uh, we, we need to get to the place in our life where we recognize and we observe the ability that God has. Amen. He, what, what can he do? He can do all things. Amen. There's nothing that God cannot do. He can do all things. The Bible says exceedingly and above all. What well, puts the limits on God? Would everyone please raise your right hand? We are the ones that put the limitations on God. The faith that we have in Him is what limits His ability to work in our life. If we would ever get to the point where we could overcome our fears and have more faith, then God could move on those limitations. Hello, somebody. There's no sickness or disease that God cannot cure. There's no problem that He cannot solve. There is no need that God cannot meet. If we just have faith in Him, amen? What's verse number three say? Uh, verse number four. Oh, my goodness. Then saith one of His disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which would betray him. Verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? All of a sudden, Judas had become concerned about where the money was going. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I think the government has proved to us that he who controls the money controls the people. Now, now they've got their self convinced that people don't need money to be happy. But people have to eat. So if they control the food, they can not control the people. If they can control our health, then they will control the people. But you see, I, I don't have hope in monetary things. I don't have hope in things that I eat. I don't have hope in my own health. What I do have hope in is Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God that can do all things exceedingly and beyond. Amen. I think that if Walt Disney ever got anything right, whenever they put the words in Buzz Lightyear's mouth, that says to infinity and beyond. That's what God is capable and able of doing. He can heal the hurt of your heart. He can heal the diseases in your body. He can wipe away your tears. He can give you joy that passes all understanding. He can do anything. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. More than that, we have not because we believe not. I remember a time when I was in English class, and the teacher had these little hall passes that they would give out, and you, you could use that. You didn't even have to ask for permission to use your hall pass. You could get up in the middle of class and walk out, go to your locker, go to the bathroom. You could do it before class, after class, in the middle of class, it didn't matter. He gave you this get out of jail free ticket. Hello, somebody. And it depended on what he wanted to see. He would, 
he would, if you had a, a notebook and you had good notes, he might give you that hall pass for that week. So he walked in one day and he had a question. And he walked around to each and every person. And if you had the answer to this question, he said, I'll give you the golden ticket. So he started into the classroom and he looked at this one fellow. He said, why? He said, I, I don't know. Why? She said, because? He said, why? And everybody he went to had some kind of crazy answer. He got to my seat. Hello, somebody. He said, why? I looked at him. I said, well, why not? And I got the golden ticket. That was the answer that he was waiting on. For somebody to answer his question of why with why not. We, we go to God all the time and our main question is, God, why? Why me? Why this and why now? And God answers you and says, well, why not? Because if it wasn't you, if it wasn't me, then who else would it be? God knows that in this time, listen, we, we might think that we're vulnerable, we're weak, and we can't stand the test, but God knows that you have enough faith. God knows you have enough dependability on Him to see you over this hurdle and over this mountain. He knows that you have found grace exceedingly and abundantly above all things, and that's why God gives His hardest battles to His strongest soldiers. So when we work through, when we walk through diverse places, when we walk through temptation, when we walk through problems and hurt, the Bible tells us to be of good cheer. For He has overcome the world. Amen. You can see for 300 pence, I've done a little research. Amen. Sometimes you have to do your homework before you bring your oral presentation. 300 pence in today's money would have been about the, the wage of 45 bucks. Hello? Hello? To, to most of us, $45 don't seem like a whole, whole lot, but back in the Bible days, $45 was a lot of money. We can go back to the early 1900s, back when Brother Michael Nelson was born. And look at what wages was back then. Sometimes my grandma would say she would work for a nickel a day. And that don't seem like a whole lot of money. But you give a kid back in 1927 a shiny new nickel and send them to the corner store, they're going to come back with some candy and be happy, happy, happy. $45 to us don't seem like a lot, but do you know that in the Bible days, 300 pence, the value of $45, the Bible says that, not the Bible says, but Google says that it could have fed about 5,000 people. Side note, Jesus fed 5,000 people with just two loaves of fish and f two loaves of bread and five little fish. Good Lord, have mercy. So what we think is a waste, God has already covered it. Amen. He said that ointment that she just, as as you see it as being wasteful, that she used to anoint my feet, she done it unto my death. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. There's people that want to see this church shut down because we worship a true and living God. But God is saying, leave them alone. Leave them alone. They don't want to see us be happy. But God said, leave them alone. God is telling the world to leave his chosen alone. Because daddy's coming to make things right. Let me get on down the road. $45 would have fed 5,000 people, but he already did it. Leave it to Judas to spoil the party. 
But do you realize there's always a Judas? Whenever we engage in any organization, there's always a Judas. And all of a sudden they become concerned with the expenses of what things cost. But Jesus is telling them today, Judas, he already paid the price. Just leave them alone. Jesus, at that point in time, listen, when she was worshiping him and anointing his feet, he knew that the honeymoon was over. I also researched how long the disciples followed after Jesus. How, how long would you think that they followed him? Oh, it must have been a lifetime. Mm -mm, nope. It was only the span of about three years. That was a pretty short-lived relationship, don't you think? Jesus knew the honeymoon was over, and, and Judas was already trying to act against Jesus. Hello, somebody. Are y'all getting that today? Judas, after three years, was already tired of Jesus. He, he, he got tired of playing a second fiddle. Judas wanted to sit at the head of the table. He wanted to be at large and in charge. That's why he sold him for 30 pieces of silver. You realize in the, in the days of biblical times, 30 pieces of silver was what people paid for a bride. Hello? So that 30 pieces of silver was what it cost for Jesus to purchase his bride. Hello? Y'all yeah, ain't getting that. Well, my son-in-law come to me, and, and he did. He, he come to me. He said, Mr. Johnson, he said, I'd like to have your daughter's hand in marriage. And he shook my hand. Hello? That's the way it's done. That, that's the way men do it. Hello? See, back, if I'd been in the Bible days, I'd say, hey, buddy, that girl's going to cost you 30 pieces of silver. I ain't just giving you nothing. Uh-uh, 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 no. Nah. He said, well, Mr. Johnson, I ain't got 30 pieces of it. It's going to cost you two goats, four chickens, and a loaf of bread. Hello? And once we made our agreement, we'd shake hands on it. And I'd be standing there waiting on my two goats, four chickens, and a loaf of bread to come. Hello? And he would depart from me. And he would go away to prepare a house for him and my daughter to go and live. Amen? To begin, there, he would go purchase a piece of land. And he would build on that land a dwelling place. Amen? For him and my daughter to go and live. Amen? And to raise their family and begin thinking, y'all ain't hearing me. When Jesus left here, he said, I must go away. It is expedient that I go away. It's very important that I leave right now. He said, but I will not leave you comfortless, uh, but I will leave you the Holy Spirit. Amen. That will bring you comfort. Uh, but where I go, you know the way. And when I go, you know the way. Amen. Uh, he said, I go uh, and I will prepare a place for you uh, that where I go there you may be also uh, in my Father's house uh, are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. That's why he went away. He's preparing for us a mansion. If Listen. If your Bible says rooms, I will place a waste receptacle at the back door for you today. And when you leave, close it and drop it in because that is not what my Bible says. My, it does not say dwelling places. It says in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
listen, I got a fairly decent house down here. They, they some people got a nicer home than mine. But my house ain't no Hotel Six. Hello, somebody. I go, I go on vacation sometimes, and I'll stay in a hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. Y'all don't, y'all don't know that song? And I stay there for a temporary amount of time. But I can't, listen, after about a week or so, I can't wait to get back home. That's my house. I, I like it much better than the hotel down the road. Amen. But, but God said, listen, he's got something better than that. It's not a room at the Holiday Inn Express. It's not a house on 108 South Poplar Street in Pageland, South Carolina. It's a place that is beyond anything I've ever seen in my whole life. I've been to the Biltmore Mansion. I've seen how nice that is. I've seen how the rich people live. I've watched the Titanic. I've seen the greatest and, and most grand boat that ever been built by hand, ever been programmed by man. But even then, it sunk to the bottom of the sea. Amen. What my God has built is far beyond the imagination that any man has ever been able to think of to put his hands on. It's a place not built by hand. It's built by God. And that's where I'm going. Hallelujah. Well, let me get on down the road with this. See, I, I told myself this morning when, whenever I was looking over these notes, I said, I have got to stay on track today because there's so many sermons in this. People started together. Look what it says in verse number 9. They gathered together. Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake, but they came because they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. They, they wanted to, listen, they wanted to see for themselves. I've heard the story how he raised Lazarus from the dead. I got to see this for myself. Hello? It become a spectacle of sorts. People can't listen because back in the day, y'all, seeing was believing. The Bible says, blessed is he that has not seen, but yet he still believes. I've not seen the face of Jesus, but Lord, I believe. I've not seen gates of pearl, but I believe they're there. I've not seen streets of gold, but I believe they're there. I've not seen walls of jasper, but I, I believe they're there. Why? Because I read it in my book. Hello, somebody. Oh, that's a fairy tale. I, no, no. I'll prove that here in a minute. It's not a fairy tale at all. They come to see Lazarus. Listen, in the next verse of the scripture, we'll see where the Pharisees had met among themselves. Hello, somebody. They, they had a little, a little chit-chat. And, and they said, hey, you know what? I, I think we should do. I think we should kill Lazarus. Well, why would they want to do that? Because Lazarus was living proof of what the power of God can do. And they thought if we can hide the evidence, that like Hillary Clinton tried to delete the emails. Hello, somebody. If we can hide the evidence, we can get off free. Amen. We can stop people from believing. If we put Jesus in the tomb, and we seal the door shut with the signet of the king and we put guards over it and watch over it that no man can slip in and steal his body that nobody can, can go in there and take him away we make sure he stays in that tomb and nobody will believe but God had another plan what happened inside that tomb the king had no control over. What happened inside of that tomb, 
King Agrippa had no control over that. The Pharisees had no control over that. The scribes had no control over that. But God was the one that was large and in charge. Amen. In the span of three days, the Bible says that he descended into the pits of hell, took those keys away, and came out victorious. Let's go on. Verse number 11. Because by that reason of of him, many of the Jews went on away and believed on Jesus. I wonder if your life is changed enough. Now y'all think about that for just a moment. Are you changed enough? You, You see, I believe when Lazarus came out of that grave, that he had a totally different outlook on life. He, he was a different person. I guarantee he got up every morning and he walked outside and went, boy, it's a good day to be alive. What can I do today to glorify my God? And I'm sure he had a plan, a daily plan, to do something that would bring God some glory. What's your problem? What's your problem? For I, who was dead in the trespasses of my sin, by the blood of Jesus and the grace of God, I am now free. Amen. The bondage of death has no power over me. Pastor, what would happen if you if you just dropped over in the next heartbeat? You know what? I'll be set free. Death would have no control over me. We've got to believe on Jesus. So if Jesus resurrected me from the chains of death of my sins, I'm just as reborn as Lazarus. Amen? I'm trying to hurry up. Twelve. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast... When they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they began to gather. They wanted to see Jesus and they wanted to see Lazarus. The next day, many people come to see. It it was the feast. It was the Passover feast. I looked it up to see when Passover was this year. It's April the 22nd through April the 30th. Why is it so late in the year? I don't know. It's, they tried to go on to describe it to me why it was the way it was. But listen, wouldn't it be something And if at the Passover feast we wasn't even here? Everybody's looking for this April the 8th solar eclipse. Is it going to be something big? Could be. The government thinks so. They put National Guardsmen in Texas and Oklahoma. Why would they send National Guardsmen to those places if it was just going to be another solar eclipse? Something is about to go down. Hello? Whether the government going to act stupid and start something, I don't know. Or maybe they really know that God is real. And they're expecting for that solar eclipse that's going to make that perfect cross across the United States that's going to pass through cities that are called Nineveh. Did y'all know that? Have y'all been looking at that? And where the, 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 the clips come from seven years ago to the one that's coming on April the 8th, they cross into a place that is called Rapture, Indiana. X marks the spot. Hello? Could it be? Oh, it could be. It could be the day and the time that we clearly hear the sound of the trumpet. Amen. And we could be from celebrating a Passover feast down here to having the, the, the bridal supper over on the other side. Pastor, you kind of scare me. Well, if you're saved by the grace of God, there is nothing to fear. You're finally going to get to cash in that ticket you've been holding on to for so long. Amen. I got a ticket. Amen. Verse 13 says they lay palm branches 
in the street for him to ride in on as they cried Hosanna. Hosanna means blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. David, can you find the song Adoration? I meant to ask you that first. Hosanna also means adoration. Amen? It was also to fulfill a prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. The king cometh sitting on an ass's colt. Verse number 16, the disciples finally get it. As they begin to see the prophetic word come to life. We're in a time right now where we are seeing God's prophecies come to life. The drying up of the Euphrates River. The, the, the rivers that are coming into the desert lands where there used to be no water. All of a sudden nowadays water. All these signs of the times are indicators that are all pointing toward the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But preacher, the Bible says we don't know the day nor the hour. No. But he says that we can watch the seasons whenever you're ready. We can watch the seasons and all the indicators are pointing toward the second coming of Jesus Christ. Pastor, what must I do to be born again? You cannot enter into your mother's womb the second time. What is born of the Spirit is a spirit. What is born of the flesh is the flesh. But you must be born again. All it takes is asking the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You see, the disciples had heard these tales and stories that Jesus had told. But now they're starting to see these things come to life. And they were wondering within themselves, how in the world is he going to lay down his life and three days take it up again? By the power of God. What power of God is that? The same power of God that we possess. The same power of God you should possess. We should have the ability to lay hands upon people and the blind receive their sight. We, we should have the ability to lay hands and touch people on their ear and the deaf begin to hear. We, we should be able to reach and touch somebody on the lips and the dumb begin to talk. We should be able to reach over and touch somebody and the lame begin to walk. We should have enough faith, as Brother Harley's shirt says, to walk into a, 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 a mortuary and speak to someone who's lying prostrate and say, get up, you ain't done yet. Can I do that? Should. Same God. Same power. Same anointing. You just got to ask yourself, do you have it? Do you want it? Do you want to pay the price that it takes to own such a grand and glorious thing? What does it cost you? Oh, not much. But I'm here to tell you that nothing is free. What it does cost you is the ways of the world. The Pharisees in verse 19 began to see that all these things were getting them nowhere. The whole world has gone after him. That's when we see the seed of greed and jealousy mixed with the struggle for power and control to spin things in emotion that led to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Hello. Hmm. Let me go back to the music. It's a beautiful song. We used to pray to that all the time. Adoration. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 21, there was a child born. 
Y'all don't, y'all, y'all want to write that down, right? That First Samuel four twenty one. A child was born, and his name was Ichabod. What does what's what's that mean? Ichabod means the spirit of the Lord has departed. Hello. It happened in a time when the government come and remove the Ark of the Covenant out of the land of Israel. And when that Ark of the Covenant left, the Spirit of God left with it. Hello? Well, I don't possess the Ark of the Covenant. No, but you possess the Spirit of the Lord. And if we don't protect it, there'll be somebody that'll be greedy enough to come and try to take it away. So you got to protect it. Guard it like you would your wallet. My wallet ain't even in my pocket. I know where it's at, though. So what's going to happen? The Bible says in, in a lot of places, and it came to pass. Hello? It, it might have been foretold centuries and years ago. But eventually there comes a time and a place where the Bible says, and it came to pass. So whoever's going to write the next book after Revelation, will there be another book after Revelation? There will be, eventually, because those that are left behind are going to have to say, and it came to pass. And they're going to have that same dumbfounded look on their face. They're going to be like, and it came to pass that when he said, behold, I come quickly. And it, and it came to pass. I didn't believe that Jesus was coming again. But it came to pass. I didn't believe that I needed a savior, but it came to pass. I didn't believe there was a heaven and a hell, but it came to pass. Because if you don't go to one, you are bound for the other. And it came to pass. Only you are in charge of the choices that you make. You are free to make a decision, but you are not free from the consequences thereof. My mama always told me as a young boy that if you make your bed hard, you will have to eventually lay in it. Hello? And, and for those of you don't don't understand this, understand this. If my dog poops in his crate while I'm not there, he will have to lay in it. That's about as simple as I can put it. So whatever mess that you have decided to make, you're going to have to lay in it until something or someone intervenes. Pastor, I'm having a hard time right now. There's only one way to get out of that mess. Trust Jesus. There's only one way to get out of your mess. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Young people, Young people, hear me today. You think you got it all figured out. But your life is in a mess. You have a, you're, you're early in life and, and you have made some decisions that have ended you up where you are. Your mom and your dad, they try to talk to you and they try to, they try to educate you. Because they don't want you to end up in a, in a dead-end job somewhere. 
They don't want to, you don't want you to end up in a relationship that's going to cause you problems. They don't want you to end up in a place that you can't get yourself out of. It's all about choices. You know what the Bible says, Wyatt? You know what the Bible says about choices? It says, choose you this day who you will serve. Whether it be God or whether it be man, it says make that choice. Peyton, when you walk up to a soda fountain and you have to make a choice, you're sitting there going, oh, I like all these flavors. And it's hard to pick just one. Hello, somebody. I've seen kids walk through there with their cup and get a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And then when they try to drink it, it tastes like junk. Hello. How many has ever done it? We've all done it. We've all tried it. We said, I'm going to try a little bit of Pepsi, a little bit of Mountain Dew, a little bit of cheer wine, a little bit of root beer, a little bit of Coke. A little bit. And when we get it, we can't even hardly drink it because it don't taste good. But after you done put the lid on your cup and walked away and you done left the restaurant and you riding down the road, guess what? You're going to have to live with the choices that you made. So later on in life, when we get to a place because we made decisions when we were young that put us in a place that where we are. Sometimes we're wise and old because we were once young and stupid. Hello? I'll be, listen, I'll be 50 years old this year. Write her name down. I'll deal with her later. But I can tell you things that happened in my life. Listen. Wasn't great times. But they seasoned me to be the person and the man that I am today. So when a young man comes to me and he tells me about a relationship that didn't work out, I feel you, boy. I feel you. When he tells me I spent the weekend in jail, I feel you, my boy. I feel you. I've been there, too. I'm not perfect, but I am forgiven. That makes a difference. It makes a difference. You can walk around with trouble and hatred and hurt in your heart. Or you can make a choice today to give it to God. If this was a hand grenade and I pulled a pin and I said, catch. Do you, do, do you see what he did? He tried to give it back. If I say catch, you going to sit there and hold that hand grenade or you going to throw it back? You crazy? What? Skylar. Umar. Robert. You got to make a choice. Either I'm going to hold it and let it hurt me. I'm going to throw it back where it comes from. I'm sending that back. Because I'm not going to hold on to it and let it hurt me. Where are you at today, church? Have, have things fell upon you? Like that hand grenade with a pin pulled. Are you still holding on to that thing? Or are you ready to throw it away and give it back? See, Jesus didn't put bad things on us. But yet and still he says, All ye who labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. 
So instead of Jesus throwing those bad things at you, he said, I got you covered. Hello. Every head bowed and every eye closed. There's some people holding on to some bad things in their life today that they need to get rid of. You don't want the Spirit of the Lord to depart from you and Ichabod be wrote on your life.